Do you ever wake up in the morning feeling groggy? Does 3 p.m. roll around and you're ready to crash? Is coffee your lifeblood? Well, if any of these were a yes, you're like more than half of Americans and you're suffering from a very common issue. In this episode, you'll learn the best techniques to maximize your energy levels from countless medical professionals. And then you'll get a chance to hear from Melanie Aycock. My name is Tiffany Roberts from the Leadership Institute, and you're listening to the Lead Your Future podcast. On the horizon, do you see it? That's the digital future coming towards us. Whether you fear it or embrace it, there's no escaping it. But LI can help you prepare to take hold of it and make it your own. Whether it's creation, analytics, communication, or strategy, the Leadership Institute can equip you for the road ahead. Go to leadershipinstitute.org forward slash training and click digital. Again, that's leadershipinstitute.org forward slash training and click digital. The only difference between being left behind and leading the way is being ready. Hey guys, welcome to the Lead Your Future podcast. If you're enjoying these episodes and this podcast, please click the subscribe button and feel free to leave a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Leadership Institute and on Twitter at Leadership INST. Do you have a topic that you're just dying to hear me talk about? Feel free to shoot me an email at troberts at leadershipinstitute.org and I'd be happy to make that happen. Now on to today's episode. So what's the big deal with energy? According to the CDC, fewer than 1 in 10 adults eat enough fruits and veggies a necessary component of an energy-rich lifestyle. An occupational health and safety study found that 43% of Americans admit to being too tired to function at work. The CDC also found that only 23% of Americans meet the minimum of recommended daily exercise. That's less than a quarter. And it's no wonder that 64% of adults rely on coffee for energy and 44.5% of Americans use powerful psychoactive drugs to stay alert. So that's a lot of stats I just threw at you. So how do we solve this problem? Well, it turns out the best medication is dedication. And it's quick and easy to remember with the acronym MEDS. Because as long as your mindset, exercise, diet, and sleep are in good shape, you'll have all the energy you need. So first up in our acronym MEDS, we have mindset. Just the right mindset can change your life. In February of 2018, Stanford conducted fMRI studies on 240 participants, ranging in all age groups. They found that positive thinking, excitement about the future, and a positive outlook on the status quo not only raised energy levels, but also made participants smarter. All the way up to age 80, a California university study found that the greatest barrier to learning is overthinking. FMRI studies found that even an 80-year-old brain would fire like a brain in their 30s with positive thinking and good technique towards learning a new skill. Neuroplasticity, the ability of your brain to change, can be maintained and utilized at any age, and positive thinking is the central difference. If you're facing something new or challenging, there is nothing more energy-building, rewarding, or powerful than a positive mindset. Now, what if I told you you can nearly eliminate your risk of heart disease and many cancers, eradicate anxiety, dramatically increase brain function, give yourself the best sleep of your life, live longer, markedly improve brain function, learn and read anything 20% faster, and dramatically increase your energy levels throughout the day with no side effects other than a mild inconvenience? No, it's not too good to be true. It's approved by the CDC and nearly all health experts, and it can be absolutely free. It's called exercise. The American Psychological Association 2010 found that we could learn new concepts 20% faster after intense exercise. Also, just going for a 25-minute walk every day lowers your risk of any kind of death by 33%. Healthline.com in 2017 shared that the same amount of exercise increases sleep quality by 65%. Exercise is the wonder drug. If you do it regularly, every aspect of your life will improve significantly. And try to do it in the sun as much as possible, because nearly half of Americans are vitamin D deficient. More sun means more energy, positive emotion, and overall, good health. Next up in our acronym MEDS, we have DIET. 
2017 Pew Research found that 90% of American diets are starved of many vital nutrients for health and energy. 78% of Americans put a high priority on diet, but it turns out we don't really do so well. With just a little more sun, bananas, fish, brown rice, and sweet potatoes, we could actually turn this around. Bananas not only have good sodium, potassium balance, and vitamin C to increase your energy, but they stabilize your blood sugar levels as well, letting you use that energy you have more efficiently. Health experts say that two bananas give you all the energy you need for 90 minutes of intense exercise. Now, fish contains omega-3 fatty acids, which help energy, emotions, and sleep. Eating fish just once a week cuts your risk of heart disease and sudden death in half, increases blood flow, improves your metabolism, your sleep, and even clear thinking. Brown rice does much of the same by stabilizing blood sugar, providing antioxidants, and helping your nervous and reproductive systems. Sweet potatoes are also incredibly nutrient-rich, prevent several cancers, and promote great memory and other brain functions. Researchers at the National Center for Biotechnology Information found that if you start the day with fruits and veggies, you will nearly double your energy levels. American diets may be slightly discombobulated, but it turns out they're pretty easy to straighten out and get us awake, alert, and ready for anything. Now last in our acronym meds, we have SLEEP. Cut back on sleep and you cut back on life. According to the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, sleep deficiency can cut your reaction time, memory, emotional stability, and energy levels in half or worse. So college students, you better be listening to this. According to the advisory board, between 1942 and 2013, the percentage of Americans getting sufficient sleep dropped from 59% to 34 Today, nearly two-thirds of Americans don't get enough sleep and suffer the consequences. Odds are, you're one of them. The National Institute of Health recommends 7 to 8 hours for adults over the age of 18. But when and how you get it is just as important as getting enough. Sleep consistency, so sleeping at the same time every night, blue light, staying away from screens and other bright lights, and actually getting up when you wake up all contribute immensely to sleep quality. Check those boxes and your sleep may transform overnight, more likely in a week or so, but you get the pun. It's no wonder that doctors from Medical News Today say that good sleep will solve 80% of your problems. For the ones it doesn't, it'll give you all the energy you need. So now you know how to maximize your energy with medical science and meds, mindset, energy, diet, and sleep. So you're ready to absolutely kill it in the workplace and reach your dreams so fast they won't even see you coming. Now, before we get into our interview, first we're going to hear from Daisha Cummings, who is a boss at Physical Fitness. She just started her own personal training business. So before we get into it, here's Daisha. Hey, Tiffany. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Daisha Cummings, and I'm excited to share just a little bit of the knowledge that I have in regards to eating well and moving well, taking care of yourself, because honestly, in any work environment, that has to be a first. It has to be a priority for you. And reason being, I know a lot of people say that, you know, there are tons of priorities to be worrying about on a day-to-day -day basis, but I would honestly say that if health is not first and foremost taken care of, then a lot of other things end up being pushed to the side because we're distracted by sicknesses or the weakness of our immune system. We're distracted by some weird things that our body's doing that we're not quite understanding fully. And so, I always, always, always encourage, I mean, just about everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a stay-at-home mom. It doesn't matter if you are, you know, working in the corporate industries. Like, you have to take care of yourself. So just from a basic standpoint, some of the key things that I always encourage my clients to be um, worrying about, I'm, a, I'm an online uh, personal trainer, fitness coach. And so I help to coach people virtually all over the country. And some of the things I find is, you know, we neglect some of the most simple things and um, they're really easy to put into place. It's just a matter of giving that extra attention and care into those little details. So, you know, eating well, sleeping well, hydrating well, moving well. Those are the four things that I would kind of just pinpoint right off the bat. If those aren't habits that you are paying attention to on a normal day-to-day -day basis, it is super, super crucial that you revisit those habits and really do your best to 
invest time and attention into those. So eating well. Big, like I think a lot of the times a lot of people are trying to um, reach a physical fitness goal um, and they normally tend to see that like less is better for fat loss, for daily operation. And I'm surprised at how often my clients come to me eating a very small amount of food. So quality and quantity of your food is going to be super important. Um, I could count a number of clients that I've had that are actually surprised by the fact that they eat more and they eat better and their energy skyrockets, which ultimately allows you to have that much more capacity to do things during the day. So if you're so busy, you feel like you can't fit a meal in, um, trust me, you can fit a meal in and that will give you an extra hour or two throughout your day because you're fueling your body with really good foods, um, which allows you to last that much longer in the work environment. Um, the second thing, sleeping well. This is, again, super crucial. Some people say, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I have too much on my plate. I don't have time to sleep. Um, I need to take care of all these work things. And again, I would tell you, until you take the time to invest well into yourself, um, you're going to struggle. And even if you don't see it in the near and immediate future of the effects that having poor sleep has on your body, you will definitely see it in the long run. You will pay the consequences for the poor habits that you have now. So sleeping well can be made as simply as just trying to get a solid seven to nine hours every night. Um, I, you know, there are a number of things you can do for your environment too. Uh, some people like to use essential oils to help them kind of calm down on their way to bed, keeping technology away from your eyes, probably about 30 to 60 minutes before you go to bed, keeping the lights completely off. Um, there are a number of things to really kind of prime your environment to facilitate a really good deep sleep, which will help significantly when it comes to your energy levels on a regular day to day, especially if they're consistent. So I do my best always to, you know, get to bed at the same amount or at the same time, get up at the same time, have a good routine, helps to kind of rebalance all of those cortisol levels and your adrenaline levels to a natural flow that works with how your body ought to be operating on a normal day to day. Uh, the third thing, hydrating well, and this is super simple, just calculating your body weight, chopping that in half and drinking that amount in uh, ounces of water. Now, if you're looking to do some big fat loss thing, then I would say look at your goal weight and do that. Um, but again, this is just another one of those really simple things that I think we oftentimes push to the side and don't do, even though it's really, really easy. Um, and then the last one, moving well. And this is also, I would say, moving well, but also moving smart. Uh, you can move in a myriad of different ways and exercising doesn't necessarily have to look super intense or like a CrossFit workout. I would say minimally, do your best to have some work breaks and take a walk around the block around your building or even walk around the office and go say hi to some coworkers that you have. Or obviously, a lot of us are at home. <laughs> so get outside, move around outside. And especially getting that great source of vitamin D would be helpful as well. Um, but walking minimally, getting your steps in um, is a really great way of just getting your blood flowing so that you're not sitting in the same spot all day while you're working and staring at your screen. Um, but if you do have time to set aside to get up and get active, um, you know, anything from swimming to playing team sports that you enjoy to um you know, I, I, because I'm a stay at home mom personally and do a lot of my work remotely with my kiddo around, I've got resistance bands and a couple of dumbbells in my living room and just have time to do slow, intentional, um, weight training, resistance training that will, you know, get me working for 30 to 45 minutes. And that's my way of investing into myself every day. And I would just say, honestly, from a working standpoint, what's going to be so helpful from an energy level perspective is it's going to be so hard to take care of all the external things in a work environment um, if you aren't investing into yourself. You can't pour out of an empty cup. So caring for yourself has got to be a number one priority in all of this. And I think you will immediately see the benefits of the things that you're doing. Even though they're simple changes, they make a big, big difference. So I would just encourage all of you, if you're looking for that increase in energy and that extra stamina and endurance to get through those long work periods, look at those habits that you have for yourself. Are they, are you investing in yourself? Are they a part of your normal routine? And if not, 
Don't try to change everything at once. Take it one step at a time. So for one week, adjust your sleep. And then the next week, adjust your water intake. And then the next week, try to make some better food choices when you are looking for a lunch or a dinner um, in the middle of your work week. Take those work breaks. Implement a workout routine. Don't get super overwhelmed by trying to put all those pieces together right at the beginning. Um, so I think that is just a very brief um, but very simple way that you can apply all of those things when it comes to getting that extra bout of energy. Just remember, you are a priority and a lot of other things will begin to fall into place if you put that attention for, towards yourself. Now, in just less than a minute, we're going to sit down with Melanie Icock, and she's going to give us some of her advice for living a healthy lifestyle. My name is Tiffany Roberts from the Leadership Institute, and you're listening to the Lead Your Future podcast. Do you want to fight liberal bias on your campus? Have you or your friends witnessed it at school? If so, Campus Reform wants to hear from you. Campus Reform is dedicated to fighting liberal bias on college campuses. You can help Campus Reform in their mission by sending incidents of liberal bias their way. To do this, all you have to do is go to campusreform.org tip. All right, welcome back, everybody. I am now here with Melanie Acock. She is the graphic designer at Freedom Works, and she also is a body attack instructor at Gold's Gym. Uh, Melanie, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for bringing me on. Awesome. Um, so first, can you start off? What do you do at um, Gold's Gym, and you know how are you related with the kind of the health field? Sure. Um, so especially pre-COVID, I was a body attack instructor at Gold's Gym. It's a sports-based cardio class. Um, honestly, like it's just a lot of fun. It was a release for me. And I got into it a couple years ago and just decided, like, might as well teach it if I'm always there. So <laughs> that's awesome. And so what what did you did you study? You just studied um, you know, graphic design in college, right? <laughs> yeah, graphic design and political science. So really not connected at all to the health field. Um, but I am NASM certified. So um, I got to learn all of that uh, post-college. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So it's mostly just a passion, you know, free time. That, that's sure. really awesome. Yeah. Um, so our episode today is about energy. Um, I kind of want to just get your input on uh, what is the biggest thing that um, people deal with when they're um, struggling with their health? Is it usually their weight? Is it their, you know, their mindset? What are the biggest things that people struggle with? Oh, I think 100% it's the mindset. Um, I It's so easy, especially in this town as young professionals to get caught up in, um, you know, unhealthy habits and just like overstress all the time. Um, I think the next step for people is to think that they just need to work harder um, and spend more time at their work instead of taking a break and then coming back um, and um, being more productive from there. So I think it is a mindset, um, yeah. Um, I think as I, you know, as I grow older, I'm starting to, you know, look at the foods that I'm eating, like, okay, like these nutrition facts on these packages, they are really bad. Like I shouldn't be eating this. So what are some of the, what, that's just one, but what are some other barriers or what are some of the biggest barriers that, um, people have today being, uh, to being healthy in the United States and how do you kind of overcome that? Right. Well, I think the problem is that we have like an information overload, um, people are more health conscious now, but it's because it's being like a fire hose uh, sprayed at us constantly. So we are, we have a lot of information, but we don't know what to do with it. Um, so I think it's just kind of finding what's right for you. And that's, that can be a hard um, barrier to overcome to find what it is that, you know, works with your lifestyle. So let's say somebody, they are, you know, in the workplace, they are working every day, you know, even with COVID, it could be at home or even at work. What are, what are the, some of the ways to uh, manage their energy levels, not just by drinking coffee? Cause I know some people drink like, you know, 10 cups a day and that's just crazy. What are some ways that we can manage our energy levels during work? So yeah, I definitely am a coffee addict. I'm not going to pretend like oh, I'm no. not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will say that, I mean, 
it, it definitely is not a fix all copy. It's a, um, I think that like as a creative, um, you definitely need to take time to recharge that um, by doing things other than sitting at your desk or, um, you know, trying trying to look on social media or whatever. I think um, you really just need to take a break and go outside and take a walk like that. That ultimately just kind of clears your mind and um, physically gets you moving as well. And I'm sure, you know, diet also plays a big role in that. Um, I know a lot of people go on all these diets and like I've tried keto myself, but then some people are like, keto is the worst. Is there a diet that we should be sticking to or is it just, you know, being mindful of what you're putting in your bodies? Right. That's the thing. I um, kind of ties into what I was saying earlier about being an information overload. There's constantly new diets, new like quote science or facts that come out. And at the end of the day, it, while it's not easy to eat healthy and eat in moderation, like that's ultimately the simple answer is just, um, you know, finding or just finding something that works for you every day and not just, you know, a crash diet um, or anything like that because you're bound to rebound at that, at that point. Yeah. And do you think there's anything that, I mean, that we all, it seems like we're always getting our diets and exercise wrong. Is there anything that you think we, we're doing well as Americans uh, with our, you know, health conscious kind of ideas? Well, we're, we're definitely a society of extremes. So um, while there are some people at one extreme of the system, like people, because there has been um, more of an uptick in um, health consciousness, people have gone to the other extreme and gone really into, um, you know, different fitness competitions and that kind of thing. I think, um, I think generally though, people have, have kind of find, found their way. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that either extreme is very good, <laughs> um, but I guess, I guess because there are so many options, um, People yeah. Forget about that. Yeah, and and there's also, you know, I went to the I went to uh Seattle recently and I saw like the West Coast they're very it seems like they're very health conscious. Like there's a Cybels everywhere, like you can go to like all these really health conscious places, but on the East Coast it seems like all we have is fast food. I did not see like one McDonald's when I was in Seattle. I couldn't believe it. it it's crazy, but it seems like there's a very uh big divide between, you know, Oh, fast food, whatever's quick. And then on the West Coast, very healthy and um, very conscious about what they put in their bodies. That's true. Yeah, I think it's definitely there's it depends on the part of the country you're in, part of the world you're in, really. But um, actually, I saw a study a few years ago that Arlington and Washington, D.C. are some of the healthiest cities in America, which kind of shocked me. But I guess it ultimately is like a city of extremes um, and people, you know, might do all day brunches, but then they also are constantly at solid core, you know, soul cycle, whatever it is. So that's <laughs> true. Well. Also a lot of people in DC, they, it seems like they care about, you know, outward facing, like how they look to other people. Cause like they're on the news all the time, people like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, they're probably more health conscious because the way people look at them. Also people don't drive. People are like walking everywhere to like the Capitol and everything. So that definitely helps as well. Mm -hmm, for sure. Walkable city. So what would you say are some of the best tips that you can have for somebody who, you know, they want to be healthy, they want to um, have higher energy levels at work? What are some of the first steps? What are some of the things that they can do to, to change that? I, I'd say just keep it simple. Um, you know, you, you know what is healthy as far as food is. Um, I, I think we often spend too much time just making excuses or justifying why we can't go to work out or we can't you know, eat healthy. But I mean, everyone knows that like fruits and vegetables are healthier than donuts. Like just, <laughs> it, it, I'm not saying it's easy to make that decision, but it's simple. And ultimately, you know, if, if we just strip it down and take out all of the, you know, fad diets of, you know, pop science, whatever it is, um, you ultimately know what you should and shouldn't be doing. So just listen to yourself, listen to your body and, ultimately, it'll be better for your mind and body. Awesome. Well, thank you, Melanie, so much. It's all the time we have to, for today. But thank you so much for coming on. Um, and I really appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Lead Your Future podcast. If you like this episode, please subscribe, share, or leave a five-star rating on iTunes, Spotify, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
It is the Leadership Institute's mission to increase the number and effectiveness of conservative activists and leaders in the public policy process. That's why I bring you on-camera TV trainings, public speaking workshops, debate workshops, speech writing workshops, and so many more. If you're interested in taking one of these trainings, feel free to check out our website at leadershipinstitute.org forward slash training. The Lead Your Future podcast is produced and edited by Tiffany Roberts with support from Jared Cummings. Advertisements by Alexander Chang and Christopher Olson. Executive produced by David Fetter and Morton Blackwell. If you want to learn more about the Leadership Institute and see behind the scenes photos, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to Leadership Institute on YouTube.